Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Geshe Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 17th of August. India evacuates 170 people from Afghanistan, including ambassador. Evacuation flights resume at Kabul airport as U.S. President Biden defends withdrawal. And Sri Lanka replaces health minister as COVID outbreak worsens. And now for all the details. India on Tuesday airlifted around 170 people, including the ambassador from Afghan capital Kabul, in view of the prevailing situation in Afghanistan, following its takeover by the Taliban. Meanwhile, India's Interior Ministry on Tuesday introduced a new category of e-visa for Afghan nationals to fast-track their applications for entry into India. An Indian Air Force C-17 heavy lift aircraft evacuated a second batch of around 170 people, including the Indian ambassador to Afghanistan from Kabul, and landed in Jamnagar in India's western Gujarat state on Tuesday. The emergency evacuation came in the view of the prevailing situation in Kabul following its takeover by the Taliban. Ambassador Rudrendra Tandon said a small number of Indian nationals remained in the country whom authorities were attempting to bring back as soon as commercial flights resume, while the situation is changing rapidly. There are many others who continue to work in Kabul city despite the changing situation and then have changed their minds subsequently uh, and will be brought back when the commercial services begin. Meanwhile, India's Interior Ministry on Tuesday said it has introduced a new category of e-visa for Afghan nationals to fast-track their applications for entry into India. These visas will be valid for six months only and will be granted only after security clearance. India's Foreign Ministry had said on Monday that it was in constant touch with the Afghan Sikh and Hindu community members and would also facilitate repatriation to India of those who wish to leave Afghanistan. India has administered more than 8.8 .8 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines in the past 24 hours, the highest ever vaccinations achieved in a single day. The surge in inoculations came alongside a sharp decline in daily new infections that fell to 25,166, the lowest since March 16, Health Ministry said. India administered more than 8.8 .8 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine in the past 24 hours. Government data showed on Tuesday, close to its all-time record in speeding up a campaign to inoculate all eligible adults by December. The surge in inoculation came alongside a sharp decline in daily new infections that fell to 25,166, the lowest since March 16, Health Ministry said. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia also took to Twitter and said India achieves the highest single-day record in COVID-19 vaccine doses. India has undertaken one of the world's largest COVID-19 vaccination drives and has so far administered 554 million doses, giving at least one dose to about 46% of its estimated 944 million adults. Only about 13% of the population have had the required two doses. Experts have said India needs to administer 10 million doses a day to achieve its aim of inoculating all adults by December. Meanwhile, India's overall COVID-19 case load on Tuesday reached 32.25 million, the second highest globally behind the United States. The country reported 437 deaths over the last 24 hours, taking the toll to 432,079, the government said. In news from Afghanistan, large crowds of people desperate to flee Afghanistan continued their wait at Kabul airport as military flights evacuating diplomats and civilians resumed early on Tuesday. Days after, the Taliban seized the capital. Earlier on Monday, U.S. President Joe Biden said he stood squarely behind his decision to withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan and rejected broad criticism of the chaotic withdrawal that is posing a crisis for him. Military flights evacuating diplomats and civilians from Afghanistan resumed early on Tuesday 
after the runway at Kabul airport was cleared of thousands of people desperate to flee after the Taliban seized the capital. Stefano Pontecorvo, NATO civilian representative to Afghanistan, said on Twitter, Runway in Kabul International Airport is open. I see airplanes landing and taking off. Under a U.S. troops withdrawal pact struck last year, the Taliban agreed not to attack foreign forces as they leave. Flights were suspended for much of Monday when at least five people were killed, witnesses said, although it was unclear whether they had been shot or crushed in a stampede. Despite the scenes of battle in Kabul, U.S. President Joe Biden defended his decision to withdraw U.S. forces after 20 years of war, the nation's longest, that he described as costing more than one trillion U.S. dollars. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. That's why we're still there. We were clear-eyed about the risk. We planned for every contingency, but I always promised the American people that I would be straight with you. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. The Taliban captured Afghanistan's biggest cities in days, rather than the months predicted by U.S. intelligence, in many cases after demoralized government forces surrendered despite years of training and equipping by the United States and others. Meanwhile, the UN Security Council called for talks to create a new government in Afghanistan after Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned of chilling curbs on human rights and violations against women and girls. Taliban spokesman Suhail Shaheen said, the group would respect the rights of women and minorities as per Afghan norms and Islamic values. But many Afghans are skeptical and fear roundups of anti-Taliban politicians and activists. In news from Pakistan, religious parties in Pakistan, including the Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazl and Jamaat -e Islami, have hailed and congratulated the Afghan Taliban for seizing control of Kabul and taking charge in Afghanistan, terming it as a victory. Leaders of religious parties in Pakistan have hailed and congratulated the Afghan Taliban for seizing control of Kabul and taking charge in Afghanistan, terming it as a victory. In a message issued to the Taliban leadership on Monday, Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazl chief Molana Fazlu Rahman said his party appreciates restoration of normalcy and policy of reconciliation by the Afghan Taliban adding that Mujahideen had liberated their country from foreign invaders and their agents through sacrifices. According to local media reports, Jamaat-e-Islami chief Sirajul Haq said he hoped the new government would culminate in establishing the supremacy of Islamic laws, while Jamiat Ulema Islam Sami leader Molana Hamidul Haq Haqqani urged Islamabad that it should now take decisions in favor of the new government in Kabul. According to the U.S. and Afghan officials, Pakistan wields considerable influence with the Taliban and its main intelligence agency supports the group while the insurgents enjoy safe havens in the country. Islamabad, however, denies the allegation. Moving on, scores of locals staged a massive sit-in protest in Gilgit, Baltistan recently over the shortage of doctors in the illegally occupied region. They blamed many pregnant women have died in the absence of a gynecologist in the main district headquarters hospital in Ganche district. Scores of locals held a sit-in protest recently over the shortage of doctors in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan. The protesters blamed many pregnant women have died for the want of a gynecologist in the district headquarters hospital in Ganche and alleged that some doctors were drawing salaries without even performing duties. They demanded the posting of a gynecologist and other specialist doctors with immediate effect and warned of continued protests if their demands were not met. डॉक्टर ने ये खुशीसन गायनेकालोजिस्ट के इश्यू पे जो ना हम लोग यहाँ पर निकले हैं और लोग यहाँ पर धरना दिए बैठे हैं और ये धरना उस वक्त तक जारी रहेंगे जब तक हमारे जो मुतालबात मंजूर नहीं होता और यहाँ पर गायनेकालोजिस्ट डॉक्टर और दीगर डॉक्टर्स तायनात नहीं करें। 
Locals blame Pakistan government has consistently maintained its oppressive attitude towards the people of the region and ignores even their basic demands. They have now become increasingly intolerant of the Pakistani occupation. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa reshuffled his cabinet, appointing seven new ministers, the president's office said on Monday. Rajpaksa replaced Health Minister Pavitra Vanya Rachi in the wake of the growing opposition and public criticism over government's mismanagement of the country's fourth wave of COVID-19. Vanya Rachi, who publicly endorsed sorcery and magic potions to battle COVID-19 as infections and deaths hit records high, has now been given the charge of Transport Ministry. While the health portfolio had been given to Media Minister Kehiliya Rambukvela, who is also the government's spokesman. Rambukvela took over the post as the country faces a rapid increase in COVID-19 infections due to the Delta variant. The new health minister said it was imperative that collective social responsibility of all citizens is needed to defeat the pandemic challenges. The country has reported 364,968 positive cases so far, including 6,263 deaths. Authorities have set up the first ever design studio in Srinagar city of India, Jammu and Kashmir to promote traditional carpets and help artisans to get acquainted with modern designs. The facility utilizes advanced softwares to create new designs of carpets while also enabling the preservation of old ones. Authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir have set up the first ever design studio in Srinagar city to promote traditional Kashmiri carpets and help artisans to get acquainted with modern designs. Kashmiri carpets and kani shawls are known for their exquisite designs and intricate workmanship. In order to consolidate the region's legacy and create a design bank, the studio has been set up by IICT, the Indian Institute of Carpet Technology in Srinagar's Bagi Ali Mardan Khan. The facility utilizes software such as Net Graphics and Naksh for creating new designs of carpets while reducing rejections and enabling the preservation of old designs. Kashmir was a whole world in the carpet. But before technology, we didn't see that our carpet is going to be made. So what will it be? When we were at the loom, at the time of completion of the carpet, after 10 months, 12 months, 2 years, when the carpet came from the loom, we would see what was missing from the carpet. The authorities said weavers, artisans, manufacturers and exporters can avail the facility by approaching the IICT camps. Customers can also choose colors for customization for their carpets and experts will also give training to the people of the valley to help the artisan community and uplift the handicraft sector. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India evacuates 170 people from Afghanistan, including ambassador. Evacuation flights resume at Kabul airport as US President Biden defends withdrawal. And Sri Lanka replaces health minister as COVID outbreak worsens. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Goodbye.